Yeah, so that's space there on Burrard doing his comedy. It's really a comedy. Uh, first weekend of October, you should go check him out. Woo Our next reader, she is so hot right now. She's everywhere. She was on CBC Radio this afternoon. She just came over from the Mayor's Roast. Um, she has a book coming out this month. I'll tell you about that later. She got an MFA in creative writing this year. She does improv. She's a fucking amazing. Uh, please have a warm welcome for the lovely and talented Caitlin Fontana. <laughs> Possessor, there's you know, 
Um, there's some fire. Uh, Tiki Winky gets dragged around a little bit. Lala is screaming. Um, Lala, uh, sorry, the sun baby grabs Lala by the neck and drags her to the machine room. Is this a set from the Teletubbies that we just never saw? <laughs> or it sounds like a Teletubbies like Saw franchise hybrid, um, which I would probably pay to see. Um, once inside, Tinky Winky chained Lala to the wall by his arms and grabs some weird long tooth thingy. This is where most fan fiction ends up going. Uh, there's only so long, uh, so much of the opinions coming out. Uh, there's only so long people can, once they're in the furiousness of it, they can't control their desire to get to the death or sex or whatever uh, long enough to actually describe the objects that are happening in the story. So they just it just becomes some weird long tooth thingy. I don't care what it is, just shove it down Lala's throat to be wretched and distressed <laughs> agony. <laughs> And then at the end it says, there's an interjection from the author. This is just the first chapter. I'm going to write ten more. Oh, ten more! Yeah. And it says, uh, fellas, I think we're ready to attack the human race, Lala whispered. That's the end of that one. Oh. So there you go. Some Teletubby terrible fan fiction. Um, amazing. Let me skip ahead. Uh, and then this one is one of my favorite ones I've discovered in the last little while. Uh, presumably all of us are aware of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes? Good. Yes. Okay. Um, there's, on this particular website you can, uh, you can categorize your fan fiction, and this one is categorized. Oh, first of all, it's Soul Surfer Fan 116. Of course. Um, it's called High School Lives, and it's uh, rated K+, which means five-year-olds can watch it, read it if they want to. Um, <laughs> And it's in the hurt, comfort, friendship category. These are all important. So uh, it also lists, as some uh, fan fictions do, specific pairings of characters so that you can mention the pair for the characters that are going to hang out together in the story, I guess. Otherwise, like you need to know in advance that Veruca and Charlie are going to hang out in this, Mike and Violet are going to hang out in this, and Augustus is going to hang out with O.C. Does anyone know who O.C. is? Neither do I, it's never said. Uh, so here's the summary. All five kids now have new problems as they enter high school besides getting good grades and trying to find what clique they each belong in. As well, as well, other problems, well, new relationships form. As well, other problems, well, new relationships form. Problems and issues, Baruka. After her dad loses all their money, she can't stand her life, and wanting to escape her parents, she moves in with her best friend, Violet, and takes a liking to the new boy, Charlie Bucket. He's not a new boy. They almost inherited a chocolate factory together <laughs> several years ago. <laughs> Nonetheless, while worrying how to become popular again and trying to figure out what is wrong with Violet... Aww. Yeah, poor Violet. <laughs> She was a blueberry for a while. That's probably had some effect on her teenage sucks. <laughs> Violet, she and my TV have always been enemies, but when they start having feelings for each other, their parents won't allow it. So then they have to sneak around. Plus, when popular girls at school make fun of Violet, calling her ugly, stupid, and fat, she goes on a dangerous diet and just might kill her. This is some point in this in which I thought, I would watch this television show <laughs> if this was on TV and it's a matter of time before someone pays this Soul Surfer fan 116 $50 for her idea and then makes a million dollars by putting it on the CW. Charlie, he has always been poor, but when coming to a new school, all of a sudden he becomes popular. Will he let all of it go to his head or still act like himself? Meanwhile, he likes Ruka. Will he still like her or leave her in the dust? <laughs> Lots of stuff coming here. Mike, he always hated Violet's guts. Now he likes her a lot and he's sneaking out to be with her. But when people start making fun of her instead of helping her, he turns to Violet and fight. But when he realizes Violet needs him, it will be too late. Augustus, blue, has always been fat. But when he comes back to school after summer looking thin and sporty, every girl falls for him. But they don't really care about him when he meets a girl who is sweet and caring. But she's chubby. Will he take a liking to her or drop her from one with many other girls? Okay, so you've got the characters in place here. Chapter one, no one's point of view. What? Yeah, sometimes in fan fiction, if you read a lot of it, they choose a point of view that you're like viewing the story from. 
Um, and they just tell you that instead of writing it properly. Uh, <laughs> but in this case, there's no one with a point of view, and she takes the time to tell us that there's no point of view. <laughs> and, uh, and now I will read this, this remaining section um, in the way it was written, which is the only punctuation that occurs is quotation marks, around quotations, there are no commas, periods, anything. Uh, there's one misplaced apostrophe in a plural situation. <laughs> so here we go. Can you believe we're starting high school tomorrow? You know, it's going to be so exciting since Ruth Salt's her best friend, Violet Beauregard. Yeah, not really. It's high school everything. It's harder. It's about labels. Let me read that one again slower. Yeah, not really. It's high school everything. It's harder. And it's all about labels. <laughs> Says Violet Sign. Yeah, everything's about labels. That's how school is. But don't worry, we're going to become incredibly popular. I won't forget about you. Yeah, whatever Violet says as they continue walking up the path to the Lucas house. Oh, poor Violet, you're probably going to get be put at the loser's table this year, says a familiar voice. Anyone do. Anyone do is familiar voice. Is that so TV? Violet says to her mortal enemy, my TV. Yep, well, I will be super popular. I don't know who's saying that. Whatever, she doesn't care, right, Leo? Yeah, of course, Violet says, faking a smirk. How do you fake a smirk, by the way? walking away to catch up to Baruga. Daddy, I'm home and Violet's here. Hi, Mr. Salt. Hi, Violet. I'd love you to stay, but I have to talk to my daughter. Family business, you know. OK, bye, Baruga. Call me tonight, Violet says before walking home. What's wrong, Daddy, Baruga says with a worried look. Our bank account. Someone broke into it. It took all our money. So what I'm trying to say is we're broke. <laughs> Oh, 
rubbing his bottom. <laughs> Due to the sudden impact it received moments ago. Morning too, Jim mumbled. What time is it? James asked McCoy sleepily. Time for you to get a watch, dumbass. <laughs> now, McCoy is a salty dog, but he would never, ever call James T. Kirk a dumbass, even in those days. Minus ten nerd points. <laughs> now get off the damn floor and get ready. We have finals today, and I couldn't handle it if your sorry ass gets kicked out due to low test scores. That's not McCoy. Let me through an apple at Jim's head. I don't know where it came from. Bouncing off the top. This is my favorite part. Bouncing off the top of the top of the scale. <laughs> <laughs> and rolling under James's bed. Eat up, McCoy grinned eagerly. Don't want girls to see a peakish gym. Oh, yeah. wow. J.C. Kirk's worst nightmare, being peakish. <laughs> J.C. Kirk scowled for once. Sorry, James T. Kirk scowled for once. It was Leonard. This guy uses proper commas, so I know where to pause. It was Leonard who was back in a good mood and not Jim. Now, Jim knew how it felt when he annoyed McCoy 24 7. Biting back a cruel retort, Jim trudged to the bathroom. Trudged is not a word. Before he entered, he noticed that McCoy's hair was slightly damp and gritty. His hair was gritty. Possible bad scores. The end. Thank you very much.